Frank, oui. trocamos de novo hoje. Eu apresento os, os palestrantes locais, você igual. Tá bom. Bom, bom dia a todos. É, dando prosseguimento ao nosso, é, nossa escola, em teoria das folhações. Oh, I forgot. I have to speak in English. Uh, today uh, we are going to have the second class of uh, Carolina Araújo on regular foliations on algebraic surfaces. Okay, okay, so good morning everyone and good afternoon for those in, uh, in CIRM. Uh, so the idea of today's class is to work out a specific case of Brunella's classification of regular, surfaces, regular foliations on surfaces. So I remind you that yesterday we have reviewed the minimal model program for surfaces and I stated uh, the Enrique Escodaira classification of uh, non-singular um, surfaces, minimal surfaces, and then I stated Brunella's classification of uh, regular foliations on surfaces. So today we will, uh, I will try to explain the idea of the proof of the special case uh, when the Kodaira dimension is negative. So let me state the result that we are going to prove today. So here, as, we'll, as usual, denote a uh, smooth non-singular surface and F a regular foliation on, on S. But today we will assume that the Kodaira dimension of S is minus infinity. And then we have a classification in this case Then, uh, so there are three options. So the first, the first case is then that the foliation F is uh, induced by a, well, actually maybe let me first say one more thing before I give the classification. Let me first say what, uh, what S is. Then in this case, the first conclusion is that S itself is almost always a, uh, a minimal surface, in, more precisely, S is the projectivization of a vector bundle E over a curve, uh, E over a curve B. And F satisfies one of the following conditions. So, First case is when F is induced by this P1 bundle. So this is a P1 bundle. And the first case is that where F is when F is induced by um, this vibration. The second case, uh, F is everywhere transverse to this uh, P1 bundle. And then in this case, we have uh, two, uh, two options. If the base B is rational, so if B is isomorphic to P1, uh, then the existence of this transverse foliation will imply that in fact, S is P1 cross P1, and F is induced by the other projection.
call it pi prime. And when the genus is larger, then in this case, this, uh, this transversality will imply that we have, um, that the disfoliation is, uh, it can be recovered from the monodromy uh, associated to, so this, this F comes from, by the monodromy representation, Okay, so this is the transverse case. And there is one more case that happens in a, a very uh, specific context uh, that F is uh, turbulent foliation. Um, with respect to an elliptic vibration that is transverse to pi. So I will, I, what, what I want to do today is to give you an idea of the proof of this theorem. So let me recall some of the, the tools so here are the tools, some of the tools that we are going to use. So in this context now, uh, again, um, S, let me say just S is a surface and F is a regular foliation. On S. So the first tool that we discussed yesterday was um, the Baumbach formula. So I will refer to it as Baumbach. So it, uh, it relates the churn numbers of S with some uh, invariance of the foliation F. So let me recall the two formulas that we saw. So there are many ways to state those. Um, so let me write them as I did uh, yesterday. So basically the first formula says that the second churn uh, character, second turn class of this vector bundle is zero, and this is just because the foliation is given by a non-zero section, nowhere vanishing section of this uh, vector bundle. And if you write this down, you can, um, let me, let me write it this way. So this is the first Baumbach formula, and the second one says that uh, the normal bundle of F squared is zero. And now, using the relation between the normal, the tangent bundle, the tangent bundle of F and that of S, we can rewrite this. So this is just the C1 of S plus K of F squared. And this is C1 S squared. So the reason why I'm writing it this way, so there are many ways I can just write down combinations of, uh, of these formulas. And one combination that uh, yesterday, yesterday we used, for instance, to show by writing a specific uh, arrangements of these formulas to show that a K3 surface cannot contain a regular foliation, and today, if we, I think we take this one minus two times this one, then we get a formula that we are going to use today, which is this this one here, that the C1s squared minus two C2s is equal to Kf squared. So this is the version of the Baumbach formula that we are going to use today. So another tool that, um, that I also 
want to mention is the Camacho SAD formula. abbreviated in this way, and it says the following, that if I have a curve that is tangent to F, so under this assumption here, if C is um, invariant by F, then its square is zero. Okay, and then the third, the third uh, tool that I want to use is something that we have not discussed yet, which uh, let me call it um, tangency formulas. So the idea is that, is that we are going to use the, the canonical bundle and the normal bundle of the foliation to detect tangency between curves and this foliation or between uh, two foliations. So let me start by uh, recalling that we had this um, F can be described by this exact sequence. And so in particular, and then the, the claim, so I, first of all, let me take a curve in S that is uh, generically trans, not invariant by F, so generically um, transverse. So this is my curve. Uh, C. So here's my curve C. So generically, the foliation is uh, transverse to, to C, but then there are some special points where we have um, tangency. And so we can, we can define the tangency index between F and C, and this is a non-negative integer that counts with the appropriate multiplicities this, uh, this tangency points. So we can define this invariant and the, and the claim is that uh, this number, this integer, can be com computed in terms of these uh, line bundles. So the first formula says that this is just the, the normal bundle of F intersected with C minus two plus two times the genus or the arithmetic genus of the curve C. And it turns out that this is the same as computing the canonical of the foliation intersected with the curve plus uh, C squared. So this equality here, well, it follows from two formulas. So first of all, the relation of the churn, the first churn classes of this uh, vector bundle. So the fact that we have that minus Ks is equal to minus kf plus the normal bundle of f. And the adjunction for the usual adjunction formula that tells that if for, for surfaces that tells us that if you want to compute the arithmetic genus of a curve, you can uh, do it by the, this way, ks plus c intersected c. This is just the canonical bundle of c, the degree of the canonical bundle, which is two times pac minus two. So these two formulas give this uh, two equality. So let me, let me prove this claim. Okay. 
Okay, so we have seen already that a foliation F can be induced by a uh, twisted one form. So this is the one form that defines, the twisted one form that defines uh, F. And then we can restrict it to the curve C. And so this gives us a global section here. And this tangency index between the curve, the foliation and, and the curve, is nothing but um, the number of zeros of this, uh, of this twisted form. So this is the degree, so in other words, this is the degree of the divisors of zeros of this section. And this, well, this is just the, the anti-canonic, the, the canonical divisor on C. So the degree here is, um, minus 2 plus 2 PAG uh, plus the intersection of the normal bundle with C, which is exactly what we uh, wanted to prove. Okay, so this is the first, uh, this is the first uh, tangency formula that we are going to use. But there is another also very useful tangency formula, which, uh, which uh, computes the tangency between two foliations. So we have our given foliation F. And now suppose that we have a second foliation on, on S. Then we can define the tangency divisor, let me call it D, the tangency divisor uh, between F and G. So this is, a, this is an effective divisor on S, and it supports precisely the, the union of the curves uh, formed by the points where F and G um, coincide, where the two foliations are tangent. So this G, this, it may be a singular foliation, so this, cur this support will, of course, contain all the, um, the singular points of G. And then the second uh, tangency formula tells us that the, this tangency divisor is linearly equivalent to NF plus Kg or in a similar way, Ng plus Kf. So I leave it, I leave it to you as, a, as an exercise to prove this. And the idea is very simple. What you have to do is to, in order to describe this divisor, you can uh, take a, a local uh, one form defining F and a local vector field defining G. Then you contract them, then you get a function. And this divisor of tangency is just the, uh, the divisors of zeros of this function. And then if you write this down, you just get exactly this, uh, this formula. Okay, and then um, before we go to the, to the proof of our theorem, let me just make a, make a remark. That is going to be uh, very useful. So suppose that we have a curve, a rational curve on on C that is, uh, that has zero self-intersection. So whenever you have on a surface, a 
a P1 with zero self-intersection, then uh, it induces, you can look at the linear system given by C, and then this will induce a rational vibration on S. So then the, the linear system will induce a vibration with some base B. Um, and this and this vibration and this C is a, is a, is a fiber of pi. Sorry? Um, no, in this case, in the end, I think C should work. Any genus. Okay, maybe let me say that C induces then then get maybe 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 one have to take a you're right maybe one have to take a multiple of C I'm not sure so we get this in any case we get a vibration whose general fiber is a is a rational curve so that the inverse image of a point is uh, is this okay so it may have some singular fibers. But the general fiber is P1. Now, if this curve is tangent, is invariant by F, then of course, the normal bundle of F of, of F intersect C is going to be zero. And then this will be true for every fiber. And therefore, from the tangency formula, it will follow that F is induced by this uh, rational vibration. Indeed, if F were not induced by this, by rational, by this uh, rational vibration, then I would take a general fiber would be, would, would be uh, not invariant by it, but then by using the tangency formula, you would get a negative number for the tangency between F and C, and this is impossible. So in fact, it has to be, um, F must be induced by this vibration and then because it is a regular foliation, it is in fact a P1 bundle. Okay, so now I think these are, these are the tools that come from the assumption that, um, that S admits a regular foliation. And we will also make use of the theory of uh, algebraic surfaces, riemann raw adjunction formula, the intersection um, form, etc. And now I think we can proceed uh, with the proof of the, the main theorem of today. Okay, so let me recall that yesterday we, we discussed the minimal model program for, for surfaces. So what we saw is that if you, if you are given a surface S, after uh, you can look for minus one curves. Whenever you find a minus one curve, you contract it. And then after a finite sequence of blowdowns, you get to a minimal surface. And in this case, because we are assuming that the Kodaira dimension of S is negative, this, this minimal model has to be a, um, a ruled surface, either P2 or a ruled surface. We don't have to worry. Uh, we know that S is not isomorphic to P2 because we have already proved that P2 does not carry any regular foliation. So in the end, what we do is we start with our surface S, and then we contract some minus one curve, and then we do it finitely many times until we actually get to a ruled surface. 
call this uh, B over some curve B. So the general, so what we get, we may have some reducible fibers, but the general fiber is a P1. So this is the mean, what the minimal model does to the surface. Let me, so this, this last surface here is the projectivization of a vector bundle over a curve B. And so the idea of the proof, let me call this composition here pi. So the, the philosophy of the proof is to compare our foliation F with the foliation induced by pi. We call it G. And by comparing, well, we have this, for instance, the tangency, uh, we have the, the, this, this three tools that I explained that we are going to use to make this comparison. And now we will divide the proof into, uh, into two steps. So in the first step, we will in fact prove that there are no blowdowns to be made in the sense that the first, in this first step, we will prove that S itself is a ruled surface, is the projectivization of a vector bundle. And then we are going to be in this simpler situation, and then in this simpler situation, we are going to classify the regular foliations. Okay, so in order to, so the first, uh, maybe first step, we will prove that um, S itself is the projectivization of a vector bundle over B. Okay, and to do, so to do that, we are going to use, um, we are going to use the Baumbot uh, formula. And remember that the, the way I stated it today, um, it involved the first and second churn uh, classes of the surface. So the first thing that we are going to do is, let's compute the first and second churn class of this, uh, this minimal model S prime. And then let's compare with the ones of S. So, okay, so let's compute. So if you, com if you compute the first, the first churn class squared of a uh, ruled surface, well, there is a very well-known formula. This is just one minus the genus of the base. Eight times one minus the genus of the base. And now this for the second, uh, the second churn class, well, this is, this is the, the topological, coincides with the, the topological Euler characteristic of S prime. And because this is a P1 bundle over B, this is just the product of the Euler characteristic of P1 and that of B. And then this can be uh, computed. So this is two times uh, two minus the genus of genus of B. And so this is, um, if you compare here, what you have is that the C1 of S prime squared is two times the C2 of S. So this is, this holds here in the last step for the minimal model. Now we will check what happens at every step that we blow up a point. So it's very easy to see what happens. So if S tilde 
is the blow up of a, of a surface S. Let me write it for S prime. Uh, then their churn classes are related as follows. So this is an easy computation on the surface. So this is just the C1 squared minus one. So every time that I blow up a point, the, the square of the first churn class drops by one. On the other hand, now if you see what happens with the second churn class, then what we are doing here is we are replacing a, a point by, a, by a, a sphere. And so if you use the, 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 the interpretation as the Euler characteristic, then you check that this is the second churn class of S plus one. So the C1 square always drops and it strictly drops and the second churn class strictly increases. So the conclusion that we have is that uh, for our surface S, we have that C1 square is less or equal than the C2 of S. You and are talking, have, uh, Carolina, sorry. you are talking about S prime, no? No, now I'm talking about, so on S prime we computed and they are equal. On okay. the, the, the two classes are equal. Ah, here, sorry, this is... And then we checked that every time that we blow up a point, this one decreases and this one increases every time that we blow up a point. So after yes. finitely many blow ups, uh, what we get is that they, they were equal in the first step. This one decreases, this one increases. So we have this inequality. Is that okay? Yes. It's but, okay, Frank? Uh, just the line uh, uh, over uh, the top line. Uh, ah, no, here I. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have this inequality, but in fact, if we have more, we have equality here, if and only if, in fact, S is the projectivization of uh, S is equal to S prime. And so in order to show that S is in fact uh, minimal, what we have to show is uh, equality. And so the, the goal then is, to, is the following. So, so the strategy is that so the strategy is uh, to show that the converse uh, holds so C1 squared minus 2 C2 S is greater or equal than zero. So if we prove this inequality, we will then conclude that we have equality here. And, and thus S is isomorphic to the projectivization, is, is a ruled surface. So this is the idea. But now, and this is how, where the, 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 the foliation plays a role, uh, the Baumbot formula that I review today says exactly that this number here is equal to kf squared. So this was uh, the version of the Baumbot formula that I stated. And so this is what we actually have to prove. Okay, so I so need to prove that kf squared is greater or equal than zero. And we are going to divide it into two cases. So 
at this point you are assuming that f is not a rational vibration, right? Um, okay, yes, we can assume from the beginning that, yeah, sorry, I did not write this, but we can assume from the beginning that f is not induced by this uh, rational vibration, otherwise we are done. Okay, so now we have to, uh, to prove the positivity of that self-intersection, so let me do the first case. I will divide it into two, two cases. So the first case is that, so we suppose that uh, the canonical bundle of defoliation uh, is effective, so that we have sections here. So this holds, for instance, whenever the curve has positive genus. So if, if the curve G, for instance, has positive genus, then we can find a global one form on the base, and then we can pull back to S. And this is going to give us a, uh, a one form on S that um, that will induce uh, a global section here. So whenever the, the, base, the base has positive genus, we get such, uh, such section. And so we can take then a divisor D. So we have a, an effective divisor D. Let me write it effectively as sum of Uh, a i d i, so this is an effective divisor that is linearly equivalent to f. And in order to show that the k has positive square, it is enough to show that it has no negative intersection with all the d i's. Now, if um, if the di itself has no negative positive intersection, then of course uh, this holds. This is an effective uh, divisor. So this case is uh, okay. And now let's see what happens when I have one component of this divisor that has negative self intersection. So if the di has negative self-intersection, um, okay, so the first observation is that it cannot be invariant by f. So this is given by the kamasho sad formula. Di is not invariant by f. And so we can compute its uh, tangency index, which is a non-negative integer between f and the i. And if you use the, the tangency formulas, um, what we get is that this is the canonical times di plus di squared. Now, this is by assumption negative, but this index is non negative, so this implies that kf dot di is greater or equal than zero. In fact, even greater than zero. And then with that, we can conclude this, uh, this case. So this finishes the first case, and we are able to prove um, what we wanted, which is that the, the k, k has positive no negative square. Okay, now the second case is when we do not have uh, sections in this or this bundle, so that is, this is not 
um, this is not an effective divisor. And in this case, as we have seen, the kentake, the base, has to be P1. And therefore, S is in fact a rational surface. Okay, so in this case, we could not pull back, uh, nor we could not get a section here, because we, of course we could not pull back a one form on P1, but we can pull back a one form with, uh, with two poles. And this gives us a section here, not of the canonical of F, but the canonical of F plus two times F. So here F will always denote a, a general fiber of the fibration. And this has to be, this is now uh, in fact effective, so we can find a global section there. And so this is what we have, and our goal is to show that in this case, when we do not have uh, KF effective, the normal bundle instead must be effective. So we want to prove that the H naught of NF is effective. And okay, we want, what we will do is to show that this is effective, uh, we will use the riemann rock uh, theorem that computes the Euler characteristics. So in order to, for the, the riemann rock to give us a um, a, good, a, a good lower bound, we have to control the H2 of this uh, normal bundle, and this is just, so this H2, or in other words, by ser duality, this is the H naught of uh, Ks minus Nf. So this is, we want to show that this is zero. So this is claim, I want to show this. And once we show this, we, can, we have the riemann rock formula that will give us a lower bound for this H naught, and this lower bound will in fact be positive using the Baumbot formula. So to show this, Let's assume um, otherwise. So if, so if this is uh, non-zero, this is non-zero, then we have a section here, we had a section of Ks plus 2f, and here we use this section to produce a section of um, Ks plus, sorry, K, Here is K, sorry, KS, KS minus an F plus uh, KF plus 2F. So we get a section here, but now this one here, this is just NF plus uh, KF, this is just KS. So this is 2KS plus 2F, but on the other hand, and so what we are getting is a divisor, effective divisor. This will yield an effective divisor D that is linear equivalent to Ks, 2Ks plus F. But now the adjunction formula on the other hand tells us that Ks plus F so this divisor D, of course, it intersects F non-negatively non because F is a fiber and this is an effective divisor. And now, uh, but on the other hand, if I intersect this with F, the adjunction formula tells us this is this exactly minus two. Minus two minus the 
uh, to the, the, the genus here of the F is, uh, is zero. But on the other hand, this is just uh, D over two times F. And so this is a contradiction. And so indeed we conclude that this line bundle has no sections. And so, as I said, we can now use the Riemann raw to estimate this H naught. So Riemann Ra we will imply that um, the H naught of S and F is is positive. Okay, when I say Riemann Rock, well, we have to write down the formula and again make use of the Baumbach formula to rewrite the right hand side in terms of the second turn class, which we can uh, control. Okay, so, um, so this, so the NF has sections. Let me try to speed up a little bit. So the NF uh, has sections. So that means that we can find. Um, Actually, we can even, when you write down the Riemann raw, you can actually get this very, I think this is greater or equal than, than three, I believe. Uh, in any case, it is positive. What I'm trying, I just want to say that this, uh, this divisor here, an effective divisor representing an F is, is non-trivial. So we have that this F is um, linearly equivalent to, in fact, an effective divisor. And so again, we do the same trick. We write this as a sum, a positive sum of divisors. And then again, using the, the, the Baumbach formula, uh, Kamash, Osad, and, and, um, and the junction formulas, all the theory of surface, we actually show that each di is in fact a rational curve. So this this uh, this can be detected in the by the junction formula with intersection of k and the inter and the self intersection. So the idea is more or less the same as we used uh, before. Okay, so. Um, if the DIs are not invariant, then we can, um, so let me just write this. If, if this DIs is not invariant by F, then we can use the tangency formula to compute the tangency index. Um, and this will give us that and that and F dot the I is greater than zero. But on the other hand, by bound bot, we know that N F square must be zero for a regular foliation. So the conclusion is that this normal bundle can be written as a sum of effective divisor, and all of these components that appear in the support are in fact invariant by F. So we conclude that 
In fact, the I is invariant. By F, well, it is uh, isomorphic to P1, and its self-intersection must be zero. In other words, what this is saying is that in this case, uh, the F is induced by this P1 bundle vibration. And so we are okay. So this, um, this F, in this case, this F is induced by the P1 bundle. So in, in, in fact, this vibration might be our given vibration or it is transverse to it, which is exactly in the case where S um, has, uh, S is P1 cross P1. So we conclude that F is induced by a vibration, rational vibration. with fiber di. And I think my time is over and I have not said anything about the second step. So let me just uh, briefly give you an idea of the second step. So this, so this finishes the first step. So we have proved that in fact our S is a P1 bundle over a base B. And moreover, in the case when the base is P1, we, we have pretty much showed the, made the conclusion. So let's assume that, so we already know this, that S is the projectivization of a vector bundle. And let's assume that um, let's assume that the genus is at least one. Then what we do is to consider the divisor of tangencies between the fol our foliation F and the foliation e, uh, G that is induced by this vibration pi. So we write down this, uh, this divisor. We know that this is uh, linearly equivalent to KF plus NG. We can compute the NG in this case because the NG is just the pullback of the tangent bundle of B. So in this case, um, so this ND here And she's just the pullback of um, D, which is numerically equivalent to 2 minus 2 GB times F. In other words, if we write this down, we get that the KF is uh, linearly equivalent to D minus G. And remember that in this case, we had already con concluded in the, in the first step that kx squared has to be zero. But then if you take, you rewrite it using this formula, what you get is this number here, d squared plus four times gb minus one times df. So let me just uh, not write this down, but let me just say it loud how the proof goes. Um, so if you write down, so if you look at this, um, if you look at this formula, the only way that it can be zero is that, um, so actually one can, one can actually show that the, this d square is always greater or equal than zero. This is using the same tricks. You write it as a sum of effective, uh, effective cycles, and then you, you, comp you, you restrict to each component, and then you work it out. And then once you have this, the only way that this vanishes is that either if the genus is one, 
and the d square is zero, or uh, if the d dot f is zero. So when the d dot f is zero, this is telling us exactly that the foliation is everywhere transverse uh, to G. And then the other case, well, requires when the, the, the genus is, uh, is one, then it requires a little bit more work to construct the elliptic vibration that is transverse to the P1 bundle, and then, uh, and then because d squared is zero, it, you get that this is, a, is going to be a turbulent foliation. So let me, let me stop here and, uh, and thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? Frank, do you have any questions from your side? Question? I have a, we have a question. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to know what happened if in the proof your G is also a regular foliation. If also what, sorry? G. The order foliation different from, from F. Um, yeah, so it could happen exactly in this case that, um, so in this, in this case, the first, the first thing that you prove is that the, so here, this, this D's, um, notice that this, this tangent C, if, if this divisor D has, contains as a, component a vertical fiber, then G coincides with F. So we can assume that our D is in fact transverse. And, uh, and if D is zero, this means that the foliation is, trans is, is transverse to, to pi. And then if there is no, if actually D is completely zero, they're everywhere transverse, then this is just a suspension of the, the monodromy. This is given by the monodromy uh, representation. And there is the case when the D is in fact uh, non-zero and then in this case you show that the genus is one and then you construct a vibration in the other direction which will be the elliptic vibration with respect to which uh, the F is turbulent. But then, okay, this does require a little bit of uh, work. I have not really discussed uh, this, this part. And so this uh, case really happened, the case of turbulent foliation. Uh, yes, it could happen. So we have For example. Instance, uh, the S could be a product. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So first you take the base elliptic curve times P1 and uh, the, uh, one form, a rational one form on P1 plus a form on the, on the elliptic curve. So exactly, this gives us yes. turbulent. Thank you. Any other question or comments? Okay, if not, let's thank Carolina again. So, uh, a quick break. We resume in five minutes, Frank. Yes.